In the headlines, residents of St. Joseph react to the announcement by the Member of Parliament that he would not contest the next general elections. The National Youth Council calls for an end to child abuse ahead of World Children's Day on Tuesday. And government ministers cautious in their approach as the country discusses the possibility of legalizing cannabis. I'm Andrea Lui with the Channel 5 News, back with the details after this. M&J Covering is the producer of designed galvanized and galvalume in Dominica. They design to your specifications, color and length, four styles of galvanized and galvalume pre-painted roofing sheets as requested and supply all your galvalume accessories. M&J Covering helps you control spending and reduce waste. At M&J Covering, they are also equipped to build your roof to precise standards anywhere on island. So come to M&J Covering at One Mile in Portsmouth or call 445-5001-275-5003 today. Thank you for staying with us. First up, residents of St. Joseph reacting on Monday to the decision by the Member of Parliament, Honorable Kelva Daru, not to contest the next general elections. Mr. Daru told a meeting of constituents on the weekend he would not be a candidate for the next general election. Initial reports say Mr. Daru has cited personal reasons, while others speculate he is planning on going away to pursue higher education. Daru told Channel 5 News on Monday he intends on releasing a press statement on Wednesday of this week. It is anticipated that a lot of the lingering questions will be addressed in that press statement. But in the meantime, residents of St. Joseph have been speaking out on this major announcement by Mr. Daru. Channel 5 News sought their reaction to the announcement by the MP. Some of the residents we spoke with did not wish to appear on camera. Well, I don't like the decision because the decision is... Furthermore, we are with the St. Joseph people are custom with him, and uh, since he is not going to be in in Parliament anymore, and we are we don't know who is going to be in Parliament, so I am not happy about it, you know, because we are custom with him already. The little talk at going on there is just street talk. We had our discussion yesterday. We had a meeting, and our pal rep which is Kelvadaro, he told us that he will be making a decision which he talked to his family about. He talked to his prime minister and his cabinet. He talked to his colleagues to know or to tell them that he make a decision this election, the next election, that he will not be contesting because he need to get further with his life. He need to go out with his life. He need to get some qualification. He need to go further. And I'm proud of my pirate, Kelva Daru. And I want him back there because senior people, they're nice, they're ungrateful for what Kelva do for them. And they want to back talk him. That's not good. Because I am from Senju. And they take me out from Senju to put me down in, my, in Senju to vote. And they tell me they will help me. And up now, they will help me. And all of I live in a house there. I buy the house and I've got a land to put it. And they're trying to see if he can help me out. And they're trying to throw him out. That's not good because you know, people, they don't, they don't, they don't, they don't like good things. It's a bad thing. They like to leave them in the bad thing. But for me, Kelva can be back to send you. And I love Kelva back to send you because he helped enough people from send you. They're too ungrateful. You heard about that? I heard him say he, he go to study, but I don't think he study. I, don't, I think it's pressure, the pressure in him. Well, my parent is not going nowhere. My parent needs a chance, and all the other people's pressure in the parent. Leave the parent as a young man. Give him a chance to see what he can do for us in St. Joseph. And our parent is not going nowhere. It's, uh, Daru know the reason why he is. He don't want to go up again. And next election, and nobody can question him. He have a choice of his own. But at the same time, and whatever candidate they and whatever person that they put in his place or whatever we have to pass on the mantle to, I think they are, we will support them. We will support the person and and at the same time, whatever people have to understand is not just fighting for that person, fighting for that person. Whoever they endorse, 
Yes, and the only thing I have to tell the Labour right is to rally with whoever they endorse. And that's all. At the end of the day, the victory will, be, all of us will reap the harvest of, of whoever win. Yes, and but the fighting among the one that candidate, that candidate, I not in the favour of that. When they endorse the candidates, all the Labour rights, whoever will have to rally behind the person, and that's all. Now, I tell him, scary it is Dr. Ferrara, and that is the only man that can fix St. Joseph. No liquor children again. Because St. Joseph is not a small village, and it's not a young village. We try Vince, or you see what happened. We try Kelvin, or you see what happened. Or they go try that little nurse, maybe that little doctor again. Yes. Eh? Okay. Oh, they go, huh? I don't want that. No, I don't no, vote I don't again. Thing, my boy. I don't. No, I, you saw you want that then? Because anytime people want them little children there, they want to always go begging, begging, begging. We want work. And for us to get work done, Dr. Ferrer is the only man that already create work all over the place every time, even before in politics, when he tried to the United Workers Party. This is the man I feel and I can vote again. Anytime I'm not going to vote for Doc, I finish in politics. And I will give that little child fire, you know. Because I'm not on no side, neither labor, neither workers. But when I vote in, I know for what I vote in. In other top stories, a recommendation to Dominica and other CARICOM nations to take a united approach toward the legalization of cannabis. One of the recommendations from Professor Rosemary Bell Antoine, who chaired CARICOM's Commission on Marijuana. Dr. Antoine was the main speaker at Dominica's inaugural National Conference on Cannabis, held on Friday. CARICOM governments and heads and we're glad to be presented to the heads, but they have to be unified on this position. It can't just be fighting each other up because, as I said, the multinationals are waiting. Well, they're already here. They're not waiting. They're already in the region. And what's going to happen, even in terms of trying to change international treaty, the Caribbean has an authoritative voice or can have an authoritative voice in changing because of the historical cultural significance of cannabis in our part of the world. We can join with Canada, Uruguay, Israel, these countries who've been ahead and really pressure to change international treaties so that we don't have this money laundering and all these other problems we have, um, your banks, you know, correspondent banking and so on. That's where the heads of state should be working towards to do that, that kind of pressure. Not Jamaica trying to do it on its own, Dominica trying to do it on its own. It needs to have an authoritative voice and have a proper roadmap. But I think in conclusion, there are now deep rationales for law reform of the harmful, ineffective, and unjust prohibitionist legal regime that currently informs cannabis, supported by strong public opinion and credible scientific and empirical data and analysis. And I think these are the rationales that will provide legitimacy to new laws in ways that the current legal framework lacks. And what we need to do is a public health, human rights regulated approach to this law reform. And we hope that the CARICOM heads can work together on it. After four years of research in the region, the CARICOM Commission on Marijuana concluded that the current legal regime for marijuana characterized by its draconian criminal penalties is ineffective and deeply unjust. The Commission is unanimous in its view that the legal regime governing marijuana cannot be maintained and legal reform should be a priority. But the Commission was also unanimous in its view that children and young people must be protected from possible adverse effects of cannabis. In related news, National Security Minister Rayburn Blackmore wants Dominica to proceed cautiously towards the legalization of medical cannabis. Blackmore shares the Prime Minister's view that it is time Dominica has a mature conversation on legalizing medical marijuana. But he believes there are some critical questions which must be answered before plunging headlong into legalizing cannabis. What is, our role, what is the role of Dominica at this time in relation to marijuana? And more importantly, what is Dominica's place in the change that is sweeping this globe? There, there have been years of research on marijuana. What is the status and quality of that research? More importantly, what is the truth about marijuana? We need as a nation to orient our minds as adults on the following. One. How can the use of marijuana help us? 
And secondly, but very important, and how can it hurt us? It would be remiss of us not to have these issues fully explored and spoken of. But these discussions will also help us to develop a template as to which direction we should take as a mature and emerging people. The National Security Minister says before the legal status of cannabis is changed, we must consider what we will need to put in place to support such a society. This is why we have sought information and research from a wide variety of groups and persons worldwide and in the region. We must, as a mature people, remember that while the use of marijuana is being legalized in many first world countries, we must never forget that our realities do not mirror the realities of first world, of first world countries in many respects. It is, it is therefore imperative that we create a path that is tailor-made to our unique needs, to the unique needs of Dominica, and let us not make law statement about the total legalization of marijuana, which is largely platitudes. Let us be objective, value-free in our approach as a mature and developing people. Discussion on the decriminalization of cannabis expected to take into account the medicinal use and properties of cannabis, especially in the treatment of chronic pain management and neurological disorders. The Minister for Health and Social Services told the National Consultation on Cannabis on Friday, research-based findings cannot be ignored and should not be left out of the ongoing discussion surrounding the decriminalization of cannabis. But, like the Minister for National Security and the Prime Minister, Mr. Daru remained cautious. On the flip side, however, one cannot deny the multitude of compelling and overwhelming evidence of psychological and psychiatric disorders intricately linked to the indiscriminate use of marijuana and the potential social ills that could result in the ad hoc liberation of the plant must be soberly and objectively factored in the discourse. Reiterating the strong arguments posed above, we all can agree that the need for this national discussion on this all-important issue is indeed very, very timely. Ladies and gentlemen, as a democratic country, and again on the heels of its 40th birthday celebration, we have to understand and ensure that in the pursuit of all for each and each for all, that the views of any one person or group of persons are not sidelined, whilst at the same time, the satisfaction of a select few does not lead to the detriment of the whole. And in doing so, we have to put systems in place to ensure that whilst individual religious and cultural rights are recognized, we protect each and every one of our citizens, especially the most vulnerable, and in this case, our children, who would instinctively go with the flow. Daru believes this would result in a new uncontrollable wave of health and social ills. You are watching the Channel 5 News. Stay tuned for more after the break. Rudolph Thomas Enterprise Imports Map, your suppliers of building materials and hardware products. Over 20 years experience in the business. Rudolph Thomas has lumber and plywood, galvanized and fenced pipe. Check out Rudolph Thomas for ceramic and vinyl floor and wall tiles, nails, nuts and bolts, paint and painting supplies. And check out their line of electrical and hand tools. Go now to Rudolph Thomas on 1240 Bay Street in Portsmouth. Welcome back. As Dominica prepares to join the international community in observing World Children's Day, the National Youth Council of Dominica is calling for an end to child abuse here. The United Nations Universal Children's Day was established in 1954 and is observed on 20th November each year to promote international togetherness, awareness among children worldwide, and improving children's welfare. On the issue of children's welfare, NYCD President Paul Barron says child abuse must be stopped so that youth can have a promising future and help in the country's development. NYC is very concerned about the issues surrounding child abuse. 
Uh, we wish publicly to condemn the act or all or any acts in relation to child abuse where it means affecting the life of those who are minors and, or very young. You see, as leaders, we cannot be impartial in our deliberations to such issues in Dominica. And I always tend to say that a country's development is not limited to brick and mortar or bridges and roads. We have a social fabric. An individual who's been affected at a very young age or been abused, the psychological effect and emotional one continues throughout their lifetime. It means, therefore, that if an individual is affected so long, he or she becomes a broken individual in the future, which is, in most cases, hard to repair. And then you have the repercussions for society. Byron says family members must be cognizant of the role they can play in ending child abuse and chastise the parents who continue to condone such activities. Um, the family plays a very critical role where child abuse is concerned. And I think as parents and guardians and such have to understand their role in the lives of their children. And for whatever reason they may seem to want to condone the act, it cannot be justified, but they can be addressed. There are solutions for them, either through the judiciary system, the legal punitive measures against the perpetrators and, and redress for the, the victims. Uh, it could mean social as in the various agents of socialization to include the church, the family, and the school step up on their rules and protect the lives of children. The NYCD president says the council is well positioned to play its part in reducing incidents of child abuse in Dominica. In, in recognizing that NYC largely is an advocacy-based organization, voluntary-based organization, if we have a situation where there are victims, we will seek through the relevant aid or donor or partner agency to find ways where we can have the relevant psychosocial intervention and support you know a um, number of our members at the secretariat have gone through the training so they can offer offer some of that and our doors are open if somebody in any way may feel i mean we're not social services or, or um welfare division but we're young persons so if for any reason someone requires a listening ear you understand? We are here to help. Dominica's resilient building codes are finding favor with the Caribbean and the wider world as a three million U.S. dollar re-roofing project was successfully completed. Project manager with the UNDP Dominica told a ceremony to mark the completion of a China-funded re-roofing project that the UNDP partnered with Engineers Without Borders and other entities to ensure the best practices were employed during this roofing project. In addition to the physical re-roofing of buildings, though, the project also worked to ensure the inclusion of the building back better standards and long-term resilience into the wider reconstruction development process of Dominica. To this end, UNDP forged a fruitful partnership with Engineer Without Borders that managed to provide the government, the international community, and the people of Dominica with valuable and extensive expertise in a wide range of engineering fields from the very early stages of the emergency relief phase. In particular, the project has been fundamental in undergoing, with the Ministry of Planning, the full and comprehensive revision of the Dominica housing standards and the revision of the associated housing standard guidelines. Tozzi says methods were adopted to give Dominica's building codes the highest visibility possible. A comprehensive communication strategy was also designed to ensure the highest level of visibility and exposure. A number of communications means were used to deliver messages to the people of Dominica, such as flyers, posters, radio channels, national news websites and social media. For example, a banner was pinned in the local news website Dominica News Online where information on the project could be easily accessible to all Dominicans. Just from the 25th of June to the 2nd of August of 2018, one and a half month, that page was accessed by 1,481,000 persons. The project manager says Dominica's resilient roofing techniques have been used with success in other Caribbean countries. UNDP also ensured that the project be provided international exposure through the official corporative social media channel as well as through the presentation 
of the results achieved by the project in other Caribbean highlands, such as, for example, Barbados, Antigua and Barbuda, St. Martin, St. Lucia and Curaçao. And Dominicans hoping to benefit from an ADRA-funded and constructed housing unit will have to wait a bit longer. The Adventist Development and Relief Agency, ADRA, had constructed houses for families which lost their residential property during Tropical Storm Erica in 2015. Six apartment units in Platma Pier were handed over to the beneficiaries in August 2017, and none of the structures sustained damage from Hurricane Maria. That hurricane dealt a more devastating blow to the country, and many more people have lost their houses and are looking for assistance. Local ADRA coordinator Priscilla Prevo says the plight of the people is well known. However, funds need to be gathered to undertake another major housing project. At this moment, um, we are still in the process of getting funding or reason. This is something we'd like to do. Um, we, we, we are planning to do, but um, we have not gotten the, the funding yet for that. And uh, as soon as we, 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 we get um, funding, we will be able to assist some persons um, with their hopes, not necessarily maybe continuing at Platma Pier and other areas, but um, they, it is a matter of getting the, the, the funding. While the organization is waiting on the monies to start such a venture, Prevo says ADRA was able to help 30 families across the country fix up their houses which were damaged by the storm. We have been involved in the rebuild um, and re rebuild response to tropical, to Hurricane Maria. A lot of our churches, schools, homes were damaged. But between January and the end of August, we were able to assist about 30 families with their homes, either re-roofing, replacing windows, whatever um, the needs were at the time. We assisted about 30 families throughout Dominica, north, south, east, and west. To end the news, the headlines again. Residents of St. Joseph react to a decision by their member of parliament not to contest the next general elections. The National Youth Council of Dominica calls for an end to child abuse ahead of World Children's Day on Tuesday. And government ministers are cautious in their approach as the country discusses the possibility of legalizing cannabis. Feel free to contact us at news at marvin2k4.com. You can also access our past newscasts on our YouTube channel. On behalf of the entire production team, I am Andrea Louis. And to all of our viewers around the world, thank you so much for watching. Join us tomorrow.